Our speaker tonight is Christina Wall. Her, she's a designer and illustrator. She has illustrated over 60 books. She's also the social, social media coordinator for Urban Sketcher. And if you participated in, what was it, the Sketch Around the World? What was that called? I think sketch, I remember. sketch Together. Yes. 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 Uh, three of us participated in that actually, Noga, Hannah, yeah. and me. Yeah. And if so, if you participated in that, and we did as a chapter, um, you remember her. She coordinated that with us. So that was wonderful. So, um, Christina, take it away. Wow. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, what I do. Uh, this is this has become really familiar, I think, uh, especially uh, uh, the the woman that's taught at Savannah College of Art and Design for a long time for a couple of years I was teaching at NKU on Zoom, <laughs> so so I was I'm used to sharing. Let me see if I can share screen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my background, and then um, I was just looking at my deck, and I have 122 slides, so I hope it goes quickly. I'm sorry I have so many of them. Um, it's it's just, when Hannah said to show a couple pictures of Romania, I was like, well, maybe I should add this one or keep adding this one. There was just so many of them. We were there for two weeks, so I can't comprehensively show everything, but I have some you know fun stuff from that. Um, so I got into urban sketching probably in 2012, and it's really become a passion for me. It helped me, uh, I, I think it, it really helped uh, make my I mean it's easy to get burnout when you work as an illustrator because so much of your stuff is so highly rendered and it kind of you know reinvigorated my career and my taste for drawing so um you know that's kind of how I got into it and so I'm going to kind of do a brief overview of what I what my day job is and then kind of get into sketching and talk a little bit about Romania and then we have an exercise at the end I just did a book on sketching that should be coming out in March. We're doing the designers working on it now and we've been getting all the images ready. You know, it's funny because when you, one thing that you never think about with as much sketching as we do, because we don't really think about archiving it and you don't realize how disorganized you are until you're looking for all the sketches that you've done in the past and are wondering where's that sketchbook that I had and then you can't find it. And then, you know, what year was this? and you know, I need to rescan this and it ends up being a, a task that you thought would just take a couple of hours ends up taking a very long time. So I am going to go ahead and share screen. Do I have permission, Hannah, to share? Yes, yes. Okay, great. And if people have questions, um, feel free to, I think there's a raise your hand thing in, in Zoom. So um, let's see, I'm going to so, do it so it shares just my PDF. So um this is a this is I haven't updated this cover image. I've got a couple new ones and hopefully Zoom will work okay. We were having, I don't know if anyone was else was having a share screen issue with Zoom. Hopefully, fingers crossed it won't crash because I have had that problem. But I think since it oh and it did it unexpectedly. I was gonna there has been a slight zoom issue lately, and I'm not sure why it's doing this. So um let me see if um if it becomes too much of a, is everybody still seeing it? Yes. 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 This minute. So this is some of the books that I've done, um, and what I do mostly, my day job is illustration, and I got into illustration. My background actually is industrial design, so I went to school uh, doing product design, and toy design, and. Um, in the 90s, I wanted to do comics, but I was too slow. So I ended up doing a lot of artwork for Star Wars games. Um, I was in like 13 books. Um, and I also did a, a lot of work for card games. I, it was fun because I actually got to do a lot of Lord of the Rings artwork before the Peter Jackson movies. So it was fun to visualize those without the lens that he put on it. Not that he didn't do good movies, but it was before all of that. So I got to work on a lot of these characters before people had a very um, definite picture of what they looked like. And um, I've worked on many toys. This was a, a concept that I had done for, I used to do a lot of work for a game, or 
toy company called Wild Planet, and I did some stuff. Oh, what's your question, Lisa? Are we raising your hand, Lisa? No, I'm not. Thank okay. You. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, oh, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, this was, I was doing some um, concepts for National Geographic toys, and so this was my, um, it was, it was sort of the food chain idea where, you know, the squid is eaten by the penguin, which is eaten by, you know, the walrus, which is eaten by the shark. It was probably too expensive to make, but I did a lot of toy concept stuff like this. And um, yeah, I, have a, I, I still occasionally do uh, industrial design. I think the last industrial design project I did was, I was designing uh, handles for fishing poles. So uh, for those that have done industrial design, you know, you end up working on a lot of wacky things. And, um, you know, I did like game covers and, you know, that sort of thing, product design. Um, and this was actually one of the funnest illustration projects I ever got to do. This was for Hasbro. And I got to do a GI Joe cover. And the art director said they wanted it to look just like Quentin Tarantino, but without the violence and, blood <laughs> and language. So it was like, so you don't want it much like Quentin Tarantino at all. But it was one of the best creative briefs I ever got. So I always think it's really funny. Um, and so I started doing children's books around 2000. Four ish. Um, some of my work, I'd done some paintings of animals that Scholastic saw, and I started doing work for Scholastic News, and that's when I started doing books. Um, and so over the years, um, I'm kind of so to get to the sketching, I'm kind of abbreviating a lot of stuff. I've done a lot of animal books. So I, um, this was a book I did in, I think it was 2000. 10 is when I illustrated. I think it came out in 2011 or 12. But over the years, I've done a lot of books about animals. And this was for the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation and the US Forest Service. And I got to go to Montana and work with the elk scientists. And this was actually uh, when we were in Yellowstone taking pictures of elk. And, um, you know, this was the, this is a copy of the book, you can still actually buy it. Um, we were just at the Grand mm -hmm. Tetons in 2019. And it was at the gift store still. And um, that was a really fun book to work on. We kind of had a mixture of comics and, and that sort of thing. So, and also I've, you know, this is a book I did for, so I've done a lot of licensed, not licensed, but a lot of books for different, this is for the American Prairie Reserve. And I get to often get work with some of the scientists and meet with the people that are working on it. This had a really good uh, nonfiction author attached to it. Um, I've done books on bats where I got to meet bat scientists and see them do their bat rescue. And uh, a couple years ago, so this is one of the pieces from the, this is them rolling on their backs. It's really, it was a really fun book. Although as I was working on it, I was thinking, how can I make it creative through a 40 some page book and keep showing bison in different poses? So there were a lot of bison in this. We could, um, and so also is uh, linking my toy and to my, design background together I this was for Encyclopedia Britannica and I was I did three books one about chimpanzees one about lions and one about elephants and there's a little book and I got to actually help design the plush as well so so a lot of these sort of uh projects that blend together and um then in 2015 I got called to do the centennial book for the San Diego Zoo and I had never been to San Diego before or their zoo. So I got to go to the zoo and take pictures. This is my favorite picture from the zoo trip because we were looking at a jaguar and her baby because they weren't on display. And I looked over and the lion was peeking in the door and it was because his food was on the counter and he, it's like your pet dog or cat. He was waiting to get fed and they said he hated being on the display, which is a really nice one in forest and stuff. And he would always, and he wanted to be in the air conditioning. They said he didn't like to be out in the woods. He preferred to be like your house cat and curled up <laughs> under something cool. Um, and so uh, th this was the first book I did for San Diego Zoo. And, these are, and it was about the legends of all the different animals that are in the zoo and um, I've done two books for them since then. This is A Wishful for Pangolin that came out in 2021. And uh, this one just came out. Uh, it was a, because of the pandemic, it was a true sloth book because it moved so slowly. I think I got the assignment in 2019 
and it didn't come out till 2022 because of supply chain issues and everybody at the zoo that approved the book were working from home everybody at the publisher was working from home and so things just moved extremely slowly but the book turned out really cute um it's about a sloth in a tree and all the animals are trying to escape deforestation and so they're trying to obviously it's a way to learn about the rainforest and different animals that are in it and here's you know one of some of the illustrations from that um and so it's a really cute book um and this is one of my most recent ones that's at Kew Gardens in London and this is the one that's done in all watercolor I kind of go back and forth between working digitally and working in paint this one was done in watercolor the book I'm working on now I'm doing in gouache uh, and that this book was all done digitally and this was so it's whatever I feel like doing at the time um, I liked working I like working digitally none of them seem to be quicker all of it seems like whatever method you decide to paint whether it's digital or in paint it just takes a long time um, but anyway so that's a little bit about what I do as a day job um, it seems like to... there's a question. I think. There oh yes. Is a... Oh sorry. Oh sorry. What's your question? I'm sorry. I didn't see the little hand raise. Oh, and somebody's. I'm like, it I'm was like... me, but you answered the question as soon as I raised my hand. Uh, oh. I was gonna oh, ask it, was it, it was me too. It was me too. Oh, okay. Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it, was it about materials? <laughs> what medium? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ask you if it was appropriate or watercolor. Yeah, I, you know, I, it's it's interesting because. For illustration, I like to play around and pro procreate, but since I got my new Cintiq, I love using it so much. I hardly ever use my, I, when I'm out sketching, I like to use just traditional materials. I think that there's, I think it's just, I like the feel of the paper and the, I mean, not, not there's nothing wrong with iPads. And actually I think procreate for people learning digital is probably the most intuitive program I've ever seen as far as materials and getting used to using a paint program if you've never used one before. But I mostly use Photoshop. Photoshop. I, yeah, I, I dabble a little bit in clip. And, you know, I, I think a little bit in clip and that's about it. Since uh, they've updated with all the Kyle Webster's brushes, which I love. That's pretty much all I use. But it, it, I, I, Procreate is a really powerful program. Teresa has, also has a question. I think. Oh, what's your question? Um. Okay. Wait. Oh, my question. <laughs> um. My question was because I thought this was really interesting. Something that I want to get into, like an illustration. So I was like, how I was going to ask you, like I guess separately, but I'm throwing a question out now. Like, how could I get into something like this? Because I love like what you've been doing it's just like really nice i like it a lot oh thanks um you know the to start illustrating children's books it's all about portfolio and I, you have to have in your portfolio what they're illustrating i know that sounds a little bit too simple but really if a publisher is looking for someone and I'm sure uh, teaching illustration and stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Who teaches at Savannah College? It says iPad 2. Yes, I'm sorry. My name is Jamie Howard. Janie? Yes. Or Jenny. Janie. Okay. Um, Jamie. I'm sure Jamie would agree that that really what it what gets people, if you want to do children's illustration, draw stuff that you like in children's book form. So do sequential stories. And it's when somebody's looking for illustration for a book they pretty much look for what they're doing so if they're doing a book on tigers like they look for tiger pictures and if they're doing a book on tractors i had i, I used to do paintings for a place that does heat transfer flags and i did a painting of a green non-branded tractor and yeah. i actually got a call from um running press running kit press kit uh, I know I messed that up. Um, they did the John Deere board books and they said, well, you had a tractor in your portfolio. And so I said, well, it's a cartoony tractor, but I guess they weren't finding a lot of green tractors in portfolio. So I did a couple of John Deere board books because of that. <laughs> but a lot of times it's because they've seen something in your portfolio that they love. So I always recommend if there's stuff that you love to draw, you know, think about it in story form because it's sequential storytelling, which 
you know, you can also do in your sketchbook, you know, thinking about how to tell a story so that they know that you can um, do a whole book. So does that answer your question or? Oh, you're muted. I know. Yeah, it answered my question. I, that that was enough information. That was great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can ask me other questions after this is over too, if you'd okay. like. Um, right. And this is uh, and and saying how global the world is these days. Um, this is my, I think it's my fourth book with this publisher, that's in Swiss Switzerland, and they found me online, and I've been illustrating books for them since, I think, twenty seventeen or so. Uh, this is the latest one about a mountain climber named Uli Stick. And I found a lot of, out about mountain climbing. One thing that's kind of interesting about being an illustrator is you find out a lot about stuff that you don't do, like mountain climbing and, you know, different animals and that sort of thing. So um, as you all know, I live in Cincinnati. So most of the places that I sketch, and like I said, I really got into urban sketching in around 2012. I have a friend that does a Taos workshop and she takes people to sketch in Taos, New Mexico. And I just really fell in love with sketching. I think it was because I spent so much time sitting at my computer that it was a revelation to sit outside in the trees and just draw whatever you wanted for no one but yourself. And I've really, it, it, it really was so enjoyable that I've kind of become obsessed with it. So I've, I've got a couple sketches here from, you know, this is the Mercantile Library uh, in Cincinnati. I put for, for our um, exercise today, I've actually put a lot of pictures of Cincinnati. Cincinnati has a lot of Italian architecture. It's kind of mixed. Um, it's got, this is a particularly, if anyone's seen those pictures that went viral about the Cincinnati library that, that has all the spiral staircases and stuff, you see it bubble up every few years. It was torn down in, in the 60s. This is another library that also has spiral staircases and stuff and it's it's at the top of a tall building and we all went there to sketch and we had a huge group I think we had close to 30 people and the library was very miffed about us being there because they didn't expect us to invade the way that we did <laughs> and um you know so here's some other this is uh I have a show at Columbia Plaza right now and I did the sketch while I was waiting for this guy to get stuff to hang up the maintenance guy was hanging the images in the show uh, this is about an hour north of Cincinnati. So these are some of the sketches I do. This is, we do actually a thing in um, Cincinnati called bourbon sketchers. And uh, uh, yeah, Cincinnati is about an hour and a half. Well, it's, we're on the border of Kentucky and Kentucky is known for bourbon. So there's a lot of fans of bourbon in Cincinnati. So we go to breweries or distilleries or wineries and we sketch. So this is one of our bourbon sketchers outings. Um, it's strange it seems like and i'm sure every place uh i'm sure florida's and jacksonville's the same where every place is getting tons of breweries mm -hmm. um and so these are just some of the places in cincinnati this is a building that uh, a friend of mine has bought and they haven't done anything with and it's been empty it used to be it used to be a showroom for fixtures for bathrooms and so we were in there uh mm -hmm. sketching but it's a beautiful building so we kind of sneak in. This is our city hall. This is, we have a couple oh. architecture, uh, and I, I need to get his name right. Uh, Samuel Hannaford, I think is his name. Um, if anyone here is an architect, is that right? I know Noga is one. Did I get his name right? I think, I think it's Samuel Hannaford. Yeah, I'm not familiar with, no. He was, he was popular in probably like the Midwest area. I think he might've built some stuff in Chicago. So maybe Wes has heard of, he did the city hall in Cincinnati and he did um, the music hall in Cincinnati. And this, this was a really difficult piece to draw when we yeah, were there. I think it almost killed us drawing this. Um, did I get it right? Did somebody just say I had it correct? Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, this is this is a view of downtown from um, a park that's now all torn up. That's one thing that's really fun about urban sketching too, is because you're capturing such a ephemeral moment because things change so fast. Um, and so this park is completely being redone. So last time I was there, I was taking pictures of the Taft Art Museum and it was totally dug up. So I don't know what their plans are, if they're building another building here, if it's gonna be a park. Uh, this is also by uh, Hannaford. 
this is the music hall and it's a really interesting if you're interested in architecture uh it was built actually in the 1800s. There was a World's Fair. It was like one of those World's Fair exhibit things. And it was actually built over a pauper's field. So whenever they do work on this building, they find more skeletons because of the graveyard that was underneath it. And so it's it's kind of supposed to be one of the most haunted places in the United States. <laughs> and we've sketched it many times. Um, it's it's they, it's there's a really nice park there right now that they've recently renovated, and um, you know there's so there's a lot of really fun places to draw there. I also like to sketch my game nights. This is uh, uh, I play D and D every week with some friends, and I also play board games, and so I often will sketch while we're playing. <laughs> and uh, you know this is some dim sum at a restaurant that we really love in Cincinnati. Um, and we also, uh, I don't know if this, if, if, the, if this group does regular zoo visits, we sketch at the zoo once a month. Oh, wow. And so every, it's like the fourth Friday, we usually go and sketch there at the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, and I would be amiss if I didn't have a picture of Fiona. Oh. Um, Fiona <laughs> is like the most famous Cincinnatian. Um, I don't know, the Bengals might be competing with her now, but I don't know, Fiona's way cute. <laughs> <laughs> and actually it was funny while i was sketching this there the the they were so cute they the two hippos were sleeping underwater this is bb and um and fiona and this little kid started banging on the window trying to wake them up because he wanted her to move around and the grandmother came up and i thought she was going to tell him to stop but then she started banging on the window too saying yeah wake up <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes at the zoo it's really fun people watching <laughs> um and but so I, oh go on what uh, i always find interesting when you sketch at the zoo is how how much uh, parents don't know the name of the actual animal that their yeah. kids are asking about and there's placards right there <laughs> and you know i was i was sketching alpaca once and the parents called it a cow and I was like, I was like, right there, it says alpaca. <laughs> it was funny because when I was working on the elk book, it's funny you mentioned that because one of the elk scientists was talking about, this is when we were at a meeting at the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. And they said they get phone calls from people asking if deer are like baby elk. So they kind of thought like deer, elk, and moose were all the same animal. And they thought like the deer were the baby elk. And then I guess elk are medium sized and then they turn into moose. It was some sort of strange <laughs> grasp people had of ungulates oh that was kind of funny. Yeah, well, that's why zoos are so important. At least it's yes. for the education, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think back then it was also, I mean, this was like about 2010. I think the internet, Google wasn't as big of, so you could ask this thing on Google now, but you know, around 2010, it wasn't as prevalent. But it was just kind of funny that they would get phone calls asking about elk origins that way. <laughs> now this is this is a, a camper spot next to my um, in-laws. So you know, I love sketching, and I think all of us love sketching and traveling. This is uh, in the Olympic National Forest. I was on a women's art retreat, and we were sketching in different areas around Seattle. So these are some of the places. Uh, my brother lives in New York City, so I end up sketching there a lot. Wow. Um, I sketched with, um, I've, I've sketched a couple times with the New York City Urban Sketchers, uh, not as much as I would like to. My brother's now moved to Long Island, so it's harder to get to the city to sketch. Likewise to Chicago, because I, I haven't been to Chicago in a few years either, and I need to get back, um, you know, because I love sketching there too. Um, Still cold. <laughs> yeah, it's colder than it is here. Uh, <laughs> and, and this is... Uh, and this is, I, I went to, uh, this is from France a couple of years ago, and this was in Dijon, and it's a good segue oh. into, uh, this, I ended up using it for the cover of my book on sketching, and this was really a fun place to sit and sketch for a few hours, and people would come up and talk to me in French, and unfortunately, I wish I spoke another language. I feel like, I feel like it's, maybe it's not too late, but I feel like the way I hear things and the way I speak, it's been really hard, like learning other languages. I don't know if anyone finds that difficult as they get older, but I feel like all I do is mispronounce things. <laughs> um, 
so speaking of mispronouncing things, um, <laughs> I'm gonna and and no go. I know we are especially interested in seeing this because you hopefully you'll go on our next tour because we um, are going to be doing two tours in 2024. Absolutely, um, I'm planning on. Yes. Yeah, we're either we're gonna. I talked her into doing one that was nine days and and one that's two weeks. So we're trying to make it so it's not as long for people that don't want to be there for. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit further from, um, you know, the rest. Of, it's a little bit more east. It's in Eastern Europe, obviously. And um, a little background, because people always ask, how did I end up traveling in Romania? And um, one of my best friends is uh, from Romania, and she came to Cincinnati in, I want to say, the mid-90s. She actually was in the square when they deposed Ceausescu. She was one of the college students that was protesting, and she left before the shooting started because she went to go get a Christmas tree, which is very Iwana, you know, to, go, you know, she's, she's very much into celebration and, and that sort of thing. And she moved to the United States. I she went to college in Cincinnati, and a lot of Romanians at the time were, you know, moving to Cincinnati and getting their degrees. And so I met a lot of them through her. And she met, she started dating one of my husband's best friends, um, and we got to go to their wedding. So we were the godparents of their wedding, which is it, like best man and best, you know, it's like maid of honor and best man, but they call it godparents. And so this is the civil ceremony, and here we are standing uh, in 1998. And, um, you know, back then it was because it was less than 10 years away from them you know, overthrowing their dictator. And it was a little bit transitional at the time. It was still a lot of fun, but it was, things were a little bit less kempt. And so we had wanted to go back. Um, Iwana was a, writing, writing a book about Romanian wildflowers. She's actually not a sketcher at all. She's a plant biologist. It, it's, it's interesting because some of the illustrations I've done, like when I draw plants in them, there was a book I did that I had to do a picture of Madagascar and we got in a big debate about vanilla because she said it's not indigenous to Madagascar and I said yes but that's what they grow there and so we were discussing um you know she gives me a lot of advice about plants and and that sort of thing when I'm illustrating certain um you know biomes and eco you know ecological advice and that sort of thing um and so she was traveling around in 2014 um the Romania became part of the EU in 2007 and I think the reason the EU was so eager to have them and Bulgaria, I believe, become part of the EU is because they wanted access to the Black Sea. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but since then, they have been putting a lot of money into the country. So when I went in 2014, it was they were building new roads. Everything was being reconstructed and it was just really beautiful. And I said, we need to take sketchers here. And we discussed it. We went kind of around the top half of the country. Uh, we started in Bucharest, which you want us from Bucharest. And it, actually on this trip, we went to a lot of the cities on the Western Hungarian border of Romania. And at the time, Iwana was saying, you know, I can't believe how beautiful these, she had never been to some of these cities either. And I said, well, you live in the equivalent of New York City. And so you just think everything's farmland. <laughs> And she was really impressed by some of the cities. We went through Transylvania. This is actually at a, um, this is called Fagarash, which is a um, citadel that we visited. And we we took a picture of ourselves here. This was from 2014. And these are some of the sketches I did in 2014. And we were thinking, oh, it'd be great to bring a group of sketches. Uh, this is at one place, Castle uh, brand when we just went there in 2022 somebody has bought it and renovated and it was being renovated at the time but it it was all about Romanian history and whoever bought it now it's all about Dracula and they're trying to make it very touristy which I don't know if that's necessarily a bad idea I think that you know anything that kind of gets people wanting to visit I think that the thing that's great about Romania right now and I can't guarantee it's going to stay that way is that it has i'm a castle addict i love visiting castles and old architecture and it's got all of those things which kind of was what made, what made prague really popular a few years ago but it's not visited it doesn't have the tourism industry yet that i mean they have a lot of people from europe that visit not as many americans 
yet, but I could see it becoming super popular because it's got so much interesting mix of old world and new world architecture. Um, this is in Pietra Nymphs, which has a really neat um, gondola that goes over the city that you can take pictures from and a lot of really interesting architecture. I mean, Romania is sort of a, I guess a lot of countries are like this. It's sort of a bunch of countries that were kind of put together after World War One. I. I mean, there was, Romania was Wallachia, I believe, before and in the 1800s. And after World War One, they redrew a lot of different uh, borders. And so half of Romania actually used to be Hungary. So in half the half the country, they speak both Romanian and Hungarian, and all the road signs are in this, both languages and that sort of thing. This is kind of more in the um, northern area, which is the Moldovan area. Um, we've been hearing a lot about Moldova because it's it is on the border of Romania, kind of between there and Ukraine, and it's been taking a lot of refugees. Uh, when we were there in 2022, we saw a few, but we didn't see that many of them. Um, the culture in Romania is Latin. So Romanian is actually a mixture, they say, between Italian and French. It's got sort of the, that a mix of those languages. So if you speak any of those languages, you probably understand a bit of Romanian. And um, so there's not as many family members from Ukraine that live in Romania. This was in Aradia. And the reason I love showing, there's a lot of vintage, they, they have a lot of Habsburg architecture there because of obviously most of the country used to be part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And so there's a lot of really beautiful um, Art Nouveau vintage architecture, which was really fun to draw. We didn't go this place in 2022 because we can't go everywhere. We kind of tried to, we're trying to figure out how we can do chunks and show different parts because the different areas of the country are so different, like up north where their border is with Ukraine, you see the wooden churches and that sort of architecture. And then the Moldovan area has the painted churches. And then to the West, you see a lot of Art Nouveau and sort of uh, more Ger Germanic architecture. So it's a, an interesting mix. This is me sketching in CBU back in 2014. And this is what I was sketching. Um, and actually a lot of areas have, uh, CBU also has a German name, which is Hermannstadt. So there's hmm. a lot of, Saxon uh, villages and that sort of thing in Romania too. But a lot of the, so it's a really neat place to visit when you're, uh, and, and to sketch. So we decided to go in 2022. Um, we actually had planned to go earlier, but obviously uh, the pandemic sort of waylaid our plans a little bit. So then after we went through a pandemic, then of course we, we had people signed up for the tour and then the war happened. And so there's a couple of people that dropped out because of that, because they share a small border with Ukraine, but it's not an area where that's close to the conflict at all or anything. I mean, obviously people in Romania are not happy about what's going on there, but it's not, there was, there were people that when you see the news didn't realize how far apart the action is from there. I mean, unless you're in the Black Sea, which we didn't. So this was, this was fun. Iwana helped us. We went from from place to place in um, a van. So we probably are gonna take probably 10 to 12 sketchers on each trip. I think the capacity of that's bigger, but I don't think you wanna be packed in there for <laughs> several hour drives. And um, what we did first, we went to Bucharest and I'm not going to do the whole trip because our trip was two weeks, but I'm gonna kind of hit highlights and we got to sketch with the uh, Urban Sketchers in Bucharest, which Mugar is the admin of. He also runs the Urban Sketchers in Constanza, which is on the Black Sea, which is really beautiful. We're thinking we're gonna add Constanza to one of our itineraries because it's kind of a resort town and you have the beach there. And if you're into like the minerals and the mud baths and stuff, they have a lot of spa stuff there. Um, and so the the group met us. Uh, this is some of the, uh, this is some of the urban sketchers from um, Romania that met us at our hotel. And then we went to Old Town, um, which this is Old Town Bucharest. And like I said, there's a lot of a lot of uh, French influence in some of the architecture there. And then of course they've got like most cities a bunch of different types of architecture. And this is us sketching with them. Um, and that's Mugur there and um, some of the other folks that were sketching with us. And this is Jeb, he's one of our Cincinnati admins. We had a lot of people from 
um, Cincinnati come and then some other illustrators. And um, there, we had a couple from Colorado that were, uh, one was a children's book illustrator and her husband liked to do urban sketching. So uh, we had a good mix of people. We went to, this is one of the monasteries we sketched at and all these people from, people kept joining us because Mugar had put a, um, had put a note on Facebook saying we're sketching and they actually hadn't done much formal sketching together since the pandemic. So they're finally doing outings and stuff, but they were still somewhat not doing things as much because of, I mean, nobody could go out. I'm sure everybody's chapter was like that. Um, we are, you know, either getting working for photos and, or, you know, working from Zoom. And so this is Mooger sketching. Um, he's, he's an amazing sketcher because he's super fast. And then he throws a little bit of color on and then finishes like in 10 minutes. So he had us moving quickly, like 20 minute uh, stops in Old Town. And you're drawing this really intricate architecture. So it was kind of a fun challenge. This is, uh, an, uh, this is Victor. Uh, he was a, a sketcher and also a pharmacist in um, Romania. So we met a lot of really fun people. This was us all at the, um, at the uh, monastery that we went to where I think Mugur said his daughter was baptized. And then we got interviewed for Romanian English radio and so it was really fun. Um, we had some people join us that were uh, in town. Uh, one of the artists, she was also an illustrator that was visiting from Berlin, but she's Romanian. So it was a really great way to meet different people. Um, everybody was really welcoming. We went out for drinks afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, this is us, us at this very historic. Everybody kept saying we should go here because it was like this very historic, really beautiful building and we were sitting outside here but you go inside and there's all this wood and carvings and that sort of thing like detail everywhere um this was uh, uh we went to uh pelish which is the palace of where their royal family so romania didn't actually have a royal family so they imported royal family from another country and built a palace for them and this is the palace called pelish which is a beautiful um you know, building. I, I don't did I have a picture of it. Here's a sketch of it. It's it's a really impressive building filled with um, carvings and that sort of thing. Um, if you go into the uh, the folder where I have the places we're going to sketch from, I have a picture of it that you can look at. And this is really funny. We just we this couple was walking a dog that we thought was really cute, and we asked if we could get our picture with their dog, <laughs> and they thought we were really strange. <laughs> But they let us take our picture. They were probably thinking Americans are very strange. Um, but we were taking pictures of, you know, and we're, we're all like we have pets and stuff and we all take pictures of animals wherever we go. And so the dog didn't seem to mind us too much, but. <laughs> <laughs> And so this is the sketch we, well, most of the people went in, um, Jeb and I stayed outside and sketched until it started raining on us. Um, you know, the, the concept plate, this is Brashov. It's, it's gotten really beautiful uh, in the time since, even since 2014, it's amazing how much construction is happening and you always see people out walking. Uh, yeah, I know it's beautiful. Like they're restoring everything. This is uh, where Kessel is, the famous Dracula's castle, which we saw from 2014. Um, these are some of the buildings in the city and you could tell a lot of the stuff's been recently restored they're getting a lot of this is from the square all of the cities in Transylvania have these big giant squares where they have concerts and people just sort of hang out and they have all this outdoor eating space and since it was summer we were able to eat most of our meals outside which was really fun um, we lucked out mostly with the weather we only got rained on a couple times here's the uh, Jeb me and Andy who's uh, one of the uh, people that was on the tour from Colorado and you can see how beautiful the square is and we thought this was funny this is this is uh Jeb and his wife Anne she's not a sketcher but <laughs> <laughs> and uh here's uh this is uh me and Jeb sketching at Castle Brand and this was one of the things that's really fun as sketchers how we always hear people talking and there was this group of British people planning a giant party there and they were talking where they were going to put the sound stage and all this stuff and it was kind of fun listening to the listening to them describe this big event that they were planning there um and this is what Castle Brand looks like now you can see there's a lot of people there you know the only thing I love castles but the but there seems to be a steep climb to get to most of them <laughs> 
this particular one didn't have an elevator either. So um, that makes it a challenge for sometimes if you have people in your group that can't do those stairs and that sort of thing. Hopefully the, they'll be doing more excess uh, for that sort of thing, um, you know, because they had so many flights of stairs. So you can see we're sketching at the bottom. I guess they figured if uh, you were going to be attacked, they would tire out the enemy with those. Well, I hills. think there was there. Well, it was also so they could see the enemy coming. Um, yeah. We didn't yeah. go to this particular castle during this trip, but when we were there in 2014, we went to a place that had a particularly. It was on a particularly high hill, and it was to watch for they. They were invaded quite a bit by other armies. Um, mostly Turkish armies, but other armies. I mean, obviously, um, you know, there was always fights over land. Mm -hmm. And so most of it was to, you know, be able to defend themselves. Um, this is one of the bars that we went to and sketched in next to, um, next to Brand Castle. So there's all these really cute places to eat and drink and sketch. Um, and uh, this was at, um, and I don't know, did I put a picture of Okay, I did. Yeah, there's a lot of, and I have not seen this in other places in Europe, but maybe they are, they have all these fortified churches, which are basically a mixture of a castle and church, where whenever they got invaded, they would, all, all the people in the town would hide in there. And this, this building was really cool, because you could actually go into these parts and see, like the walls, you could walk through and see all the places where they would be shooting stuff out like all the places where you had bows and arrows and they had holes where you could dump stuff on people that were invading. I mean, a lot of the, the buildings here are very, have very old origins. When we were in Sigishwara, the hotel we stayed in, which was Hotel Sigishwara, was, I think, had been a hotel or a res, a, some sort of resident house for visitors since like the, you know, 1600s or 1500s. It was a very old location. Um, and that brings us to Sigishwara, which is, again, they, they like to kind of weave the whole Dracula legend through everything they say that <laughs> Vlad Tepish was born here. Um, you know, he might have been, he might have been, he obviously Vlad Tepish was, I mean, he was popular with Romania because he got the Turkish army out of, but it, the, the story was very, um, you know, convoluted. And there's a, a lot of stuff has been inflated. I mean, obviously, Bram Stoker didn't do any sort of research or anything. And that's what they're known for, even though none of it has anything to do with reality. Brand Castle, which they say is Dracula's castle, Vlad Tepish actually never lived in. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's, you know, you get these legends. But it, th this is a really, that's neat about Sigi Shwara is it's, is, has anyone ever been to Toledo in Spain? Yes. Um yeah, it's it's a it's a walled city, and this is a an ancient walled city too, but it's not it's it's not like that. It's it's not as touristy. People still live here, and actually, it was really cool because Mugger hooked us up with an artist named Radish, who um, his studio was across from our hotel because Iwana was talking him to the phone. He said, "Well, I'll come over," and and we said, "No, you don't need to come over." And he was like, well, "I'm here." <laughs> So he came over and had a drink with us, but he is a UNESCO artist. One thing that we thought was really interesting about the artists in R Romania was they did a lot of art events where they would paint art and sell stuff and they would go all over Europe and do like these different art camps where they would paint and then sell it to people that I guess attend these. And it was a very close knit art community. And um, you know, this is the view from uh, from the rooftop. So that's this beautiful old city. And it's, if you go, if you look at these different buildings, it's the different guilds had, like when you see a highway that's sponsored, it's like different guilds sponsored the towers. So you had like the metal workers guild and the shoemakers guild, and this was the clock tower. And you could, this is a view from the clock tower. Ooh. And this is a view of all the, the the um, rooftops from the clock tower too. And so it's just really, they've been filming a lot of films in Romania too, because it's got a lot of ancient architecture it did, and they have actually a lot of forests. They're right now trying to convince them not to log all their forests because they have the most old growth forest in Europe. And they actually have a lot of large mammals like 
bears and lynx and they're trying to keep from they're trying to keep from logging it and losing those and they have a lot of sort of old world when we were there in 2014 we went hiking in the carpathian mountains and you know we were in one of those little towns where all the cows find their way on their home on their way uh, on their own and we went and saw a, far a farmer invited us to watch them milking the cow and they gave us fresh milk from the cow and it was just pretty amazing that they had all of these old traditional ways of doing things and you hope that it keeps that way um but this is this is considered a town or city or big city i, I think that this is i don't know what the popular population of Sigishwara is. I think it's one of those things where like the walled part is just a portion of a much larger, like they have a modern portion too. This is sort of the old part of the city, if that makes sense. So there's, there are modern, this is the old part of it, but there's like a modern, I don't want to say suburb, but part of it, like that has all the more, more recent architecture. Um, I mean, that's not where tourists go. This is a sketch that, so this is, you know, obviously not an easy place for our bus driver to come through <laughs> because of these old, um, you know, portals, sort of these old tunnels. But a lot of this architecture, a lot of it you can see has been rebuilt and cleaned up, um, but it's been there for a long time. That was one thing I was surprised between 2014. It was kind of nice, like some of it, I understand why they have to fix it up, you know, so it, they don't lose it and it doesn't keep degrading. But, you know, it, it was, it was there's something neat about, you know, seeing some of the dustier bits and now they're, you know, everything's being freshly painted and restored and everything. Um, so it was really pretty. You can see there's lots of outdoor eating and stuff here. So this was a really fun place to sketch. And actually when we were at Sigishwara, both Jeb and Andy had groups of children standing around them watching them sketch. And when Jeb finished, like one of the children hugged him. Uh, so it was really sweet. They had fans. I didn't get any fans, but uh, Jeb and Andy got lots of fans when they were sketching. <laughs> it was really sweet. Um, Christina, I just would yeah. like to give a heads up about oh. the, the time. Just uh... oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I, we we should let me let's I'll go through quickly through. This is when we are visually rottish, and I know we have our. I know we have our. Um... Wow, cool. Yeah, I, it's really I put a, and this was another castle oh, which beautiful. I have in there. People want to sketch. Yeah, it was really cool. This is another town in Transylvania. We went through several. This was in Cbu, and there was this was a peace march that was happening when we were there. Um, but yeah, you can see it, it's, the cities are very vibrant. It was a really fun place to sketch. This is on the sunset and everybody's out walking around. It was just really pretty. Um, this is sketching at this, uh, this is the, where a lot of the Royal family is buried and I don't want to ruin it by messing up the name. It's like court something, court de Algiers, Algiers. I know I'll, I'll have to type it because <laughs> I, I, I will mispronounce it. Um, and this is uh, the last day we sketched again with uh, Urban Sketchers Romania. This is the uh, Althinium. I think this is a concert house. And here we are sketching with Mover again. And some of the other people uh, had met us the day before on our last day there. And here we are comparing art supplies one night. I think we were at Ab Albahulia, Ab Alba um, which is, we went through a bunch of different roommate, uh, different wow. Transylvania towns. So this is a uh, Jeb's sketchbook. We both had accordion sketchbooks, but his made more sense than mine because mine was not as sequential as his was. Um, but uh, yeah, the, you still see a lot of old, old world stuff happening. People with hay bales and stuff like that kind of next to the modern, next to the old. Um, does anyone have any questions before we get to the next part? I'm sorry I talked so long. Yeah, I think some of these pictures could be made into complex jigsaw puzzles. I know, right? Really awesome. <laughs> I know. There's a so this is a, a the preface to before we um do our exercise. For for years, I've had friends telling me I should do a book on sketching. So I finally decided a couple of years ago to do it, and um, so I have been sort of working on it for the past couple of years and now it's finally going to the printer. Yeah. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 we're still working on final details, but you know, it's written and it's 
get in the process of being laid out. And um, when I started on the book, here's the cover. So it, I used the, uh, we, the, I decided to work with a designer and editor. Um, I have a friend that works at a publisher and they were interested in publishing it, but it feels like the way the publishing world is going these days. Um, actually, the designer and editor that work on my book used to work for F and W, which was based in Cincinnati. And if you go to Michael's Craft Store, they have a, they published a lot of those books, uh, North Point Press, I think, and like a lot of those drawing and painting books they did. And the company was went under a couple years ago because the holding company that owned it basically drained them of their assets and shut them down. Yeah. Um, it was one of those, it was like happened to Toys R Us and to Sears and so many other companies. Um, their product was fine, but the people that owned them just wanted their money. And so um, one of the women that I sketch with actually is a designer and has designed a lot of different um, art books and sketchbooks. My editor also lives in Cincinnati. Here's a couple of rough um, concepts. They're probably not gonna be finally like this. She's still tinkering with them. Um, and this is the uh, this is my editor. She uh, has done this book, and she worked with Kathy Johnson on her book. Um, uh, my designer is Claire Finney, and she did um, Dragopedia. And uh, this is a this is actually a Cincinnati did a book of, on cocktails. And she also um, I just posted a video the other day about sketching. She did is his name Douglas Gregory? Did I have his name right? Danny. She, Danny Gregory, you're right. Yes, Danny Gregory. She also uh, did some of her books. And even though I do design, um, I don't do that much book layout. I mean, my designs is more like I've done a lot of packaging and I've done a lot of illustration, but I don't do a lot of InDesign stuff. So uh, the book's 128 pages. So I decided to use somebody that's laid out a lot of art books. <laughs> and so, and Claire also is with our Urban Sketchers group. She sketches with us all the time. So she is not only you know, a designer, but she's also a sketcher. So it was exciting to get to work with her. Um, and awesome. yeah, I know it's really cool. And uh, and I, I also brought, one of the things we developed with the Kickstarter was my little mini palette. But my husband's a toy engineer. He used to work at Kenner Toys. And um, now he keeps buying, he actually just ordered, I think a fifth or sixth uh, three or you know 3D printer. And um, so he made, he's been, I did a sketch of this and he, uh, the 3D prints them. And so I'm going to actually be using this uh, for the demo tonight. Um, I, I wanted something that one thing I've noticed when I've been traveling lately is because of people vandalizing the art, they don't let you bring big bags into museums anymore. So I designed something really tiny that you can take into different museums that will fit in like your wallet. <laughs> 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 so you can work with this with like a water brush and it works really well so um i'll show it when i'm doing the demo and that brings us to the exercise the the book has obviously a lot of galleries and stuff but it has a lot of exercises um i teach sequential storytelling and illustration at northern kentucky university and um i do a lot of sketch exercises with them because i found and all of us know this that like capturing something is one of the hardest things like quickly and not just capturing, but we actually do a lot of sketch exercises just to loosen up and get comfortable putting pen on paper because a lot of times um, people freeze up when, like when I give an assignment to someone, a lot of times like, the sketches that they have days to do, like when I have them do five minute sketch exercises, the stuff I get from them is so much more exciting and fun than the stuff that they've agonized for days on. And I don't know why that is, but I decided to put a lot of that stuff in my book. And so um, I usually, I mean, I'm gonna be doing these in ballpoint pen and um, I'm going to do, the. we're gonna do, hopefully we might have to, we're gonna do a 20 minute and four or five minutes, but I don't know, I know we wanted to wrap up at nine. So what do you think, Hannah? How should we do this? We could do two, five minutes and or and yes. then do a 20 minute you think or should we maybe short I think. okay uh -huh. okay uh because we've got 20 minutes so if we mm -hmm. do a five minute and 15 minute maybe oh, yes sounds good yeah so that we mm -hmm. i mean normally i was i was planning to do more but i i talk too much <laughs> so um i'm gonna try to set this up so i can um show my drawing 
Um, Hannah, do you have access to uh, time us for like five minutes? So yes. Um, what I that's what the folders for. So um, I'm going to move forward a little bit here. Like so, I usually like draw a box and then do super quick sketches. Um, these are in ballpoint pen. And um, then for 20 minute, uh, like this is some, this is a some of the architecture in Cincinnati. And, you know, one thing I've found really quick when capturing that helps capture quickly is playing around with negative space and relationships. And I'm sure everybody, you know, when I was first learning how to draw, I always thought negative space was really stupid, but it actually is really important when trying to get something down really quickly. And so thinking about the shape, overall shapes um, is what I usually try to do in a super quick capture. So, um, you know, I'm going to start, we'll start with a five minute and then we'll do a 15 minute and hopefully, and that will take us to, yeah, let me, um, I'm going to pull up the reference that we have and feel free. Does anyone have any questions? If people have questions while I'm drawing, I'll try to take them. I'm not great at answering questions and I'm going to stop the screen share for right now so mm -hmm. and i'm going to try to bear with me while i um as a matter of fact i'm going to i'm going to see if i can get so i'm going to start with uh, this one okay and i start five minutes right We're starting now yeah let's do five minutes yes. so are we doing the same one or just whichever one uh, do whatever one you want. Um, I want everybody to kind of have their comfort level. Um, so pick one that you like. There's also a Romania folder in there if you want to do a Romania one. And if people want to look at that later too. So I usually work really small when I'm doing a you know, five minute one. And like I said, I really like to use Can everybody hear me okay if I talk? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm away from my microphone, so I might sound kind of far away. But it's really uh, getting the shapes. We have three minutes. Okay. You're you're being nicer than I am to my students. I usually just say a time's up when it's And you know, this is this is uh, doing the time sketches are also helpful, like when you're traveling and have very little time. One thing that's nice traveling with sketchers is that you get more time to sketch. But when you're traveling with family, as you know, a lot of times they're not, they don't like to wait for you. <laughs> they say, how my mom often says, well, how much do you need is like 10 minutes enough? I actually ask my husband to time my like sketches, like, please give me oh, five so you, minutes. Yes. Yeah. So you do the same thing. I'm sure a lot of us do. I mean, it's a great way to kind of make sure that you capture the stuff really fast. Um, in case you don't have much time. I mean, you're not going to get every detail, but you can kind of get the rough stuff in. I have a memory of sketching in um, 
in St. Augustine one year and my wife and our friend were busy shopping. And so I got to sit on the bench with my other friend and I just sketched and he just watched me sketch people because <laughs> I had all that time, you know. Oh, you know, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, since I since I have um, been finishing my book on my Patreon, I've started doing a, a uh, podcast about sketching and I'm interviewing Wes on Monday. Yeah, for it. I know I had a slide uh, showing the sketchy talk thing. So I'm glad that you're here today, Wes. To... All in support of Christina. <laughs> It's been really interesting. It, we, it's a podcast kind of about sketching practice. And I put them up on YouTube a couple of weeks after they run on my uh, Patreon so people can. And I've been, it's been really interesting listening to people talk about their practice and sketching and that sort of thing. I've really enjoyed it. And especially when you talk to the um, editor oh, and your yes, designer that... for the book uh -huh. that you mentioned. Yeah, they had a lot of really interesting information. 20 seconds. So now everybody has to finish all up there. And five minutes. That's time it's up. Okay. So this is, you know a great way to kind of do a quick capture and you can get a lot in in five minutes um so how much we have I, do you, would people be object to doing 10 minutes no we, okay because i know we want, <laughs> wanted to wrap up by nine so um let me um let me start actually i'll just do this make sure that i'm All right, so put the timer on 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay, starting yes. now. And so, um, yes, people take, um, and so I'll try to get a little bit of shading on it. Um, Ten minutes is plenty of time for us. We are yes, used exactly. to we as we are used to do sketches <laughs> in seconds. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I figured that these exercises would be no problem for people that you know urban sketch. I also have a lot of stuff about doing, you know, sketches from just prompts and that sort of thing too. Um, again, because I, I noticed my students really struggle when they have, um, I don't know if Jamie's noticed this too, uh, her students, but like I found the more time that they're given, the less they give. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I, I don't know why that is. Yeah, you gotta have a time limit or they won't get it done. Exactly. Yeah. that so I can't We are in two minutes, so we have eight minutes left.
I put in a lot of pictures with snow because I figured that's something that we see probably more than, well, except for Wes. <laughs> I'm not gotten the wrong pictures because I didn't get any pictures with snow, get anything of Romania. Hmm. So I, I don't know. And I don't, when I, I sent like to people, I got eight pictures. I got nine pictures is what I sent. Got the Chicago stuff, it looks like Chicago Museum and oh, yeah, okay. that's all, that's all I got. I didn't oh, get any um, let me send a I didn't the, get any Romania stuff. Those yeah, I, didn't, I didn't get any of that stuff to send to anybody. Oh, I sent it this morning. Yes. Um let me um put it in the um chat. But we are we have it's too late, but we have all the Cincinnati ones with the snow, which is yeah, which is very nice too. Yeah, ah, yes, Cincinnati with snow. Yes, you, go back and look. I'm not seeing any. You see, the snow is there. Only two had snow, like the one from Finley Market and the um. Yeah, there was like. This. But there was another folder in there that had Romania stuff too. I'm looking at your thing, and I don't see a Romania folder at all. I got one thing that says, here's the folder with the photos tonight for the exercise. And I got nine pictures. That's it. Maybe it's not sharing that folder because there's a folder inside. Oh, the folder. wait a minute. There's the folder inside the folder. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. I'm going to send that email to everybody. I also put a link in the chat if people want to see it. Thank you. I will use those pictures to practice later for another day. Yeah, because you can do these yourself if you want to. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. Yeah, we'll need some inspiration for our water soluble paintings. Yes. <laughs> yes. So this is my little, and it's got in interchangeable. Mm -hmm. so, it, um, so it has a clip, and you can clip it onto your sketchbook, which I just unclipped. That way, or I'm going to also um, put this in so it has Velcro. Putting it in the correct way. It is really what size is what size is that? It's like one and a quarter inch by. Um, well, the dimensions are on the slide in the in the show, and so see you can. Um, Hold it on your hand while you're painting. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of put it on your, it's almost you can put it on your, uh, like a ring. Oh, um, I like you can that. kind of. It makes me think of my little tiny palette, but this is like super yeah. tiny. Yeah, yeah. This is when it's 3D printed and then it's got a friction fit so that it, so that you've got like. This goes into the back here, and that, yeah. you can, and you can make it tighter. I I did it so that it was a little bit easier to hold everything because I drop stuff a lot too. So you can kind of clip it on to to the. Uh... Well, that's cool. I like yeah, that. So you can you can kind of you know play around with the and it's for like just doing quick value studies. Um, I I use it mostly for limited palettes. Um, yeah. I like to paint with a limited palette anyway. Yeah, so I'm, that I'm, that's yeah. I'm actually working on a little limited palette guide for the um for the Kickstarter I did for my book. Um, oh, that's a good for idea. My patrons and stuff. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to think of stuff. You know, one of the things when I kickstarted my book that was difficult was that you you want to from I've done a couple of comic book kickstarters, and the biggest thing that people often do is they end up promising stuff that's really expensive to make like doing yeah. like you think they add to the box shipping is super expensive as it is yeah um, and so I was trying to think of something small that we could do and um I did this uh sketch for for my husband and he you know figured out how to make it happen yeah he made it happen I did sort of a rough sketch and he Well, I like this. I have a little tiny little paint palette myself and it only has six colors. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and I like the minimalistic palette. I taught yeah. myself how to paint with watercolor just from 
five to six colors and mixing all of my colors instead of using them from the two. Uh -huh. So I still have like multiple, like, of course, colors in general that I use, but when I'm out and about, I use a minimal amount of colors mm -hmm. now instead of trying to carry everything from the house. <laughs> yes, the exactly. It's, it's designed so that you, um, I started using the uh, big pen that comes in four colors. As uh, oh yeah, that would my, be awesome. My minimalist uh, palette. I uh, I start watching. Uh, you guys all know Wagonized, uh, France Stone. Um, she she does a lot of uh, cross hatching illustrations, and uh, she's got plenty of videos out there. And she teaches for a sketchbook school, but um, she always uses ballpoint pen, and and one of the one she uses a lot is is this little guy right here, you know, with the ball, the ballpoint pen, the Bic with the four mm -hmm. colors, and she could do everything with just those four colors. Wow, that's really cool. That is cool. I really like the picture of the Cincinnati bridge. I like. It. Oh yeah, that's the that's a Roebling bridge. Uh, the same person that designed the Brooklyn bridge yes. designed that bridge. Yeah, I'm saving that bridge picture for when I have a little more time than ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've sketched that bridge. I mean, a bunch. Of, there's a lot of places that I, I feel like I've sketched, and it's probably the same for you all too. And and uh, you end up sketching a lot of the same places, and you can kind of look over the years at your archive sketches of the different places. Yeah, a popular one in Chicago is the Chicago Theater, right on oh, State yeah? Street. Yeah, because it has that big neon sign that challenges your lettering ability and your neons and your architecture. It's mm -hmm. a lot similar to some of the uh, architecture that you showed, Christina. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the Florida theater one that I showed you trying to entice you. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that was, I, love, I love neon lettering. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that was very challenging. Yeah, a lot better than that lighthouse church, right? <laughs> we are, it's 10 minutes. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, it's over? Okay. So I'm starting another sketch. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, so that, that's just a very rough, sorry we didn't get to do the 20 minute one, but hopefully, like I said, this is really easy for cleanup too with just a, that, so that's how it works. Yeah. I, had, I actually, this it actually will, it actually does it in two colors. And so it has an arrow that shows how you um, put it in. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a friction fit. So you put it in like this. And yeah, it's it's it was kind of a fun thing to design. People keep saying, well, "Why don't you do a bigger one?" And I said, "Well, there's lots of bigger ones." We wanted one that was really small. So, well, where can I get one of these? At? I want one. Uh, I can I can email. I'll have I can give a link to um, Hannah, and she can send it to everyone. Um, but since we're at ten, I'm going to stop this one so it's. We can share we can share our work yeah uh, what we did in the five minutes first if everyone i have um, both of them i don't know this this camera is not so good at seeing yeah oh gosh 
And maybe I guess I can make it close. Yeah, it's, like, it's like trying to get it not overexposed too. Yeah, yeah. This camera's not great. Great work, everyone. Oh, you did the art museum. Great. This is the fi five minutes. And then okay. this, yeah, this, is, the, is, this the, is the five minute. And then the 10 minutes. Lisa, I can scan them in. Lisa, you also okay. sketch the same that I did sketch. I sketch oh, the yeah, bridge the too. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice. Ah, a couple of us, we sketch the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Look at that. So you get a little history lesson, too. Yes. Yes. I like the Finley Market uh, image because all those planters with uh -huh. snow on top look like uh, cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing. Does anyone want to sh uh, be highlighted <laughs> to show your sketch? Maybe Christina, you are the one that has the. Con you are the I wanted to see them. It was oh, hard yeah. to see everybody's tiny. Yes. But... Who? How do I? Do I just hit? Oh. Use spotlight. Spotlight. Who spotlight. Wants to spotlight. You choose. You choose. <laughs> It says spotlight for everyone. What does that mean? One person at a time, I guess. Or you want, you can give me the make admin again or. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's and see. That's... You go to my three dots, select in the corner and okay. then choose. Make admin. Yes. Make host. Make host. Yes. Yeah. Thank so you. you know yeah, now let me go and go with Jessica. Let's see. I want so we can see what you did. Nice. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Nice. Like nice. It. Yeah. Thank I, was you. Ready for, I was ready to put my other sketch over there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> something in there. Let's go with Wes. Oh, very um, nice. There you go. Oh, oh you. Yeah. Very cool. Very good. Yes. I should have broke out my marker. <laughs> now, who, uh, Bon Beer. Let's go with Bon Beer. Let's put that for everyone. There. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that? yeah. Two for one. Who's that? What is it? Uh, who are we looking at? Root, root, I guess. Very nice. Five minutes and ten minutes. Thank you. Ruth, okay. That's me. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to unmute myself before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. Let's go and see other people. Who is there ready? Uh, Phyllis? Let's go. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Phyllis, I like wow. your tones. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Very good. Thank yeah. you. Great. Great values. This. Um, who is ready, Patrick? Whoa. Yeah, that's a oh, yeah, Pinocchio. Pinocchio. <laughs> the, um, museum has that giant Pinocchio in front of it. <laughs> Couldn't resist Pinocchio. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Uh, Everybody did see the sketches. Lisa? Lisa? Let's go with Lisa. Nice. She looks great. Uh, uh, nice. Oh. She's like crazy. That's good. that's good. Those are some hard to find lines. You found them fast. Yes. <laughs> Bridge, you know what I mean? I'd be like, calculate, calculating, calculating. <laughs> I don't that's, calculate. That's, I just I know. There. <laughs> I just love the frilliness of the architecture. Yes. Uh, Teresa? Okay. So I was like paying attention instead of like. Nice. Very good. It's those houses, yeah, colors, nice. I know those are. Those really yeah, that's great. in Columbia, Tusculum. They have all these painted ladies there. They're really beautiful. Very beautiful. Yes. Cool. Very, very Almost cool. reminds me of San Francisco, you know, with those little. It, it's similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's on a yes. pretty steep hill. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, those aren't particular, yeah. but there's a bunch that are. And that reminds you even more of San Francisco. Dale, do you have? No, I just like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ja Janet or someone else? Yes, going there. 
Oh, nice. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Very expressive yep. strokes. Very nice. Very good. Thank you. Am I missing some? Ah, Karen. 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 Mm. Oh, nice. Wow. wow. Nice. Oh, wow. Something big for very nice. Very, very All good. That? Very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Great work, everyone. I hope everyone had fun sketching. What about Sorry. Jamie? What oh. about Jamie Howard? Where are you, Jamie? Oh, she's there? gone. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just gone. Okay. Wait, there's a message in the chat. Maybe that's hers. Let's see. If I'm missing someone, no, please no, let me link. know. If not, hold the. Uh, I want to take a picture. I hope that I can. This is my. I should have done it with my iPhone because my webcam's not very. Let me take a picture. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. Yeah, we, you can maybe send a picture of your work if we, we cannot see it right now, and then I can share. Yeah, did, I, I don't know if it was yeah showing that well. <laughs> Just be, it actually shows better on the iPhone, so you might see it better than uh, during the demo because the iPhone's a lot better camera than my web camera. Yes, it happens with me as well. Yeah, I'll send a link if anyone wants to listen to the sketchy talks that are on um, YouTube. You can listen there. Okay. They're really good. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Sketchy like talks on YouTube. Yes. Uh, I'll uh, I'll send a link to Hannah. Okay. I will share with everyone and also yeah. about your the mini palette. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you thank so you. much, everyone. Thank, thank, you. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh no, good. Did you thank do you. one? No, well, I had I pulled out of the screen for I be I believe 15 minutes. I was yeah. called to do something else. Yeah. Oh, when we were sketching, <laughs> yeah, no, I missed. We were I doing quick sketches. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. I'm sorry I kept you over. No, no, thank no, you. That was great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for entertaining. All right. Thank Thanks you all for coming. Time. All right. Good night, everyone. Good thank you, Christina. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.